hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel today i'll be teaching us how you can draft and cut a basic bodice which is the foundation of all types of dresses and tops so let's get started now to draft a basic bodice you need your pattern paper you need a ruler you need a French cuff and of course you need a pencil but I'm using marker for the purpose of illustration so that we can see the tutorial properly. Now your pattern paper you're going to place it on fold like I've done. Okay this is the edge of my fold and it's going to be my center front. Okay now I have um, two rectangles here. One is going to be the front and the other is going to be the back. Okay. Now, the width of your rectangle is going to be quarter of your bust circumference plus one inch for seam allowance. So, um, the same thing for the back. Quarter of my bust circumference is 9.5 plus uh, one inch for um, seam allowance. Okay. I hope that is some very clear. Now, we have what we call um, the waist length. That's what we call the half length. Okay, so um, normally the half length for the front is always longer than the back. The reason is because of the bust in front. So for you to find out if that is correct, you can tie a rope around your neck, sorry, around your waist, I beg your pardon, and measure the half length in front and the back. You will see that there's a difference. So for me, my half length in front is 17 and the back is 15 inches so the difference between my, my front waist length and my back waist length is um two inches so this is my shoulder line okay this is my shoulder line my chest line and um for the front we have other lines so shoulder to here is called the chest line okay and then i have my bust point from my shoulder then I have shoulder to under busts and shoulder to my front waist length you can see that the back waist length this is my um, chest line and my waist length my back waist length is 15 so that's difference of two inches between the front and back but on the average most people the difference between their front and back waist length is always two inches for small sizes they could do one you know now on the chest line, shoulder line, I beg your pardon, I'm marking half of my across back measurement, which is 15, that's 7.5. I'll mark the same thing on the chest line, half of the across back measurements. Some people call it shoulder measurement anyway. So I'll just connect it together like this. So as I was saying about the front and back waist length, some people, the difference can be as much as three. Some people are really busting. So you can't use two for everybody, okay? But the average is two inches. Now back to what we're doing. I'm going to mark my um, neck width, which is three. This three is like a general figure, but it doesn't work for everybody. But on the average is three, okay? Small sizes could do 2.5. Some people that are plus size could do 3.5. When the average is 3. So I did 3 by 3 for front, neckline. For the back, neck depth, 1 inch is fine. And then 3 for neck width. This is just standard neckline. Maybe you're trying to do a shirt, you know, a simple top with a normal neckline, okay? But these values are not fixed. Okay, so back to the tutorial. Now I'm going to create my shoulder slants. From the shoulder line, I'll come down by one inch on both front and back. Okay, then I'm going to create my shoulder slants like this. So when you're doing yours, please make sure you use pencil. You know, I'm using marker because it's a tutorial. Okay, then from the slanted shoulder line, I'm going to find the midpoint from that point to the chest line, which is four. Then I'll come in by three quarter of an inch like this. Now with my French curve, I'm going to place the curve in such a way that I to touch the chest line, this point and the shoulder tip. Okay. 
So if you're a beginner, you need some you know practice to know how to use this curve perfectly. So um, this is my armhole curve for the front. Now the back, I'll do the same thing. I'll find the, mind, find the midpoint like this, and then I'll go in by half inch. For the front, I went in by 0 0.75. For the back, it's just um, half inch. Then I'll also place my curve like this and connect these three points together. Make sure the French curve is touching the chest line like this. Okay, so we're done with the armhole and the neckline. Now we'll go to what we call the boss pan. Or before that, let me mark quarter of my boss circumference on the chest line, which is 9.5. Then one inch for side seam allowance. Now on the waistline for the front, I'm marking quarter of my waist circumference 7.5. Plus two inch for um, the dart intake that we're going to be using. Okay, so I'll just mark then one inch for side seam allowance. Let me connect all the points together. So this is my real measurement, and this is my seam allowance. Okay, so I'll just put a little demarcation. This is my side seam allowance. Are we good? Yeah. Same thing for the back. So for the back on the chest line, I'll mark quarter of my both circumference plus one inch for side seam allowance. Then on the waistline for the back, I'll be adding just one inch for that intake to my waist circumference. So that's 7.5 plus one. Then one inch for side seam allowance. Okay. The front we added two. The back we're adding one. Then I'll just draw a dotted line because this is not my real side seam. We're still going to do a little alteration here. So I'm drawing a dotted line. This is not the real line yet. Okay. So, having done that, we're going to calculate our boss pan. Okay, so for the boss pan, it's so easy. You divide your boss circumference by 4 and subtract 1.5. So, for me now, my boss circumference is 38 divided by 4 will give me 9.5. 9.5 minus 1.5 will give me 8. Then my paper is on full, so I'll just mark 4 on the boss point line and the waistline. So, I'll just connect. So this has given me my boss pan. Okay. I'll do the same thing for the back. I'm marking four on the waistline and on the chest line. So I'll just connect it like this. And then if you notice, my line for the back stops at the um, chest line. Then for this one, it stops at the boss point line. So take note of that. Now I'm going to mark half half inch on both sides of the that line then i'll just create the dot for the back like this okay and then i'll just shade it to indicate my dot and then for the front on the on the bust line i'm going to mark one quarter of an inch on both sides of the line then on the waistline, remember we added two inches, so I'll just mark one one inch on both sides, like that. Then from my boss point here, I'm going to go down by one quarter of an inch and mark it. Then I'll also come up by one quarter of an inch still from that same boss point. The reason is that you don't want to finish sewing your bodies and you're having sharp edges around the boss or around the nipple. Okay, so um, this one, one, one quarter is not a fixed value. If your boss size is 36, 34 backwards, one inch is fine. If your boss circumference is around 38, 40, then you can do one, one quarter inch up and down from the boss points. Okay, then anything from 40 and above, you can increase it to 1.5 inch up, 1.5 inch down. You know, sometimes you could even get people that you do two inch up. Okay, now, on the shoulder line, I have... Um, found the midpoint then i want to just connect it to that point where i came up from the boss point like that okay okay now i'm connecting the other point to like this i'm trying to create the dot for um the front okay so i'm just connecting all the points together so if you look at the pattern very well 
I think I need to turn it um, sideways so that we can see it very well. If you look at the pattern where you see, notice that we have a lot of sharp edges here and there. Okay, so let me just turn the pattern. I'm trying to position the paper in such a way that we can see clearly because this is a very detailed tutorial that needs clarity. Okay, I think we can see like this. Yeah. So with my French curve, I need to blend all these sharp edges. Okay, so I'm just going to blend up like this. So I'll blend this side. Okay, and also blend up the other side like so. Then even, so this is for the curve. Now I'll go upwards like this. Make sure you use your French curve to do this. You blend up. You're supposed to have curves and not um, sharp edges. So that's the function of the French curve. Some people call it ammo curve. So I'm just shading out the dots. We're going to cut off all this later so that it's more clear. Okay, so um, this is a side panel and the bodice is getting set already. Okay, so this is two inches. So if I measure now and I remove that two inches, I'm going to get back my waist circumference measurements plus one inch for that. Okay, so we're, on, we're right on track. Okay, so we need to um, look for a way of reconciling the front and back together because obviously the front looks longer than the back. So just before we do that, we need to mark our zip allowance. So normal zip allowance is one inch. But before we do that, to eliminate any excess, our back is not straight, but it's curved. So to eliminate all the excess there, you mark one inch on the waistline, okay? Then I'll just connect this straight to the chest line like this. So, um, automatically, this becomes my new center back line, okay? So it's now curved and not straight, okay? Then we can now um, mark our zipper allowance, which is one inch. So I just mark one inch this way, one inch on the chest line, and one inch on the waistline, okay? Now I'll just connect all three points together. Now the center back is curved and not straight anymore. Now, if you're very observant, you should know that because we took one inch from the waistline, okay, it's going to affect the waist measurements, okay? So that one inch we took from the waistline, we have to add it back here. So that was why I told us initially that um, this dotted line is on the real line, okay? So I can now draw my real side seam line with the seam allowance already. Okay, so um, I think that's that. So, so simple. Okay, so um, this is my back pattern. And um, of course the front. So like I said, we need to look for a way to reconcile the front and back pattern together. Okay, uh, the pattern is so, so beautiful. So like I was saying, we need to reconcile the front and back together. And the difference between the front and back, for me, is 2 inches. Like I said, the 2 inches is just an average. Okay, this is 17 and this is 15. Okay, 2 is just an average, you know. So, um, that difference is going to be the width of my boss darts. So that's 2. So if your own difference is 1, that means your boss dart will be 1 inch. That's the width. If your difference is 3, that means you must really be busty. Okay, and so on. So I'll just shade the boss dart. Okay. So that we know where we're cutting out. Alright. I think we're done. Yeah, I think so. So next thing, I'm going to separate the front and back um, patterns together. I'll separate them. Okay, so we're going to work on them one by one. So this is the front. Now I'm going to cut off. Okay. I'm cutting out the neckline. Um, the shoulder slant. For me, I always prefer to add my seam allowance when I'm transferring the pattern to my fabric. Okay, but you could actually add your seam allowance to the pattern already. It depends on what works for you, but I prefer it that way. Okay, now I'm going to cut off the waist that. 
could see you can see how i'm doing it like this so um this is a basic body with um boss darts and shoulder darts you can also convert this to princess darts you know it's very easy now uh i'm gonna cut off the shoulder line the line that connects the shoulder rather i'm cutting it up like this okay so automatically we are transferring the boss dart to the shoulder okay so um before we cut out the boss darts uh, you know we need to fold it because when you fold it um you're gonna have a little um dart intake at the side okay so um i will need to add a piece of paper there can you see the shortage here yeah can you see it okay so i'll just add papers because when we're drawing the rectangle as in that added like maybe two inches extra instead of 10.5 i added 11 would have would have had like an extra paper but it's not a problem anyway so i have added paper with my masking tape both here and on the other side so i will just fold i'll just fold the boss that like this so can you see that the side seam is not you know is not, is not more aligned so i'll just link this here okay like this that is the essence of adding the paper so i'll just cut off the excess like so okay so now lead to shortage there okay i've already covered it up so it is just normal it is normal that when you have a boss that by the time you fold the darts you're going to have a shortage it's normal it's because of the dart so you need to like you know close it up can you see it there yeah like this can you see so that's the excess there that shaded part you can see the shaded part that's the excess i'm sorry the um, the little shortage that's been covered up so you cannot cut out the boss that like this okay so um oh my pattern is torn no problem doesn't matter anyway so by the time you join it like this you can see that the boss that has been transferred to the shoulder okay this is it so i'll just join this with um, uh, my masking tape so this is for one side and this is for the other side the side panel so i'll just join it with masking tape okay like this yep and then i'll just do the other side too okay so i join it with my masking tape yeah so this is how um, the front panels look like. We just quickly go to the back. I will still show us how the um, panels look like later. So for the back, I'll just cut out. Okay. Yeah, so this is my back and front panel. So you can see that uh, we've been able to reconcile the front and back. Make sure you add all your seam allowances okay here to half inch seam allowance here all the way down the waistline you know except the center front that is on fold okay and we have side seam allowance already yeah so you can see that we want to reconcile uh the front and back now if you want a shoulder that at the back is optional what you just do is you come down from the chest line by two inches that is if you want a shoulder that at the back you come down like this then I'll just use my ruler to connect the um, shoulder midpoint to these two inch points down. Okay, so this is for those that want a shoulder that's at the back. Okay, so uh, you could cut it out, but I don't want to cut it out because um, I just want to stick to the normal that at the you know the normal that. So I'll just leave it like this. Okay, I won't cut it out. Now I was saying something about reconciliation yeah okay my paper has been flipping up and down so i use my ruler to my scissors to hold it down you can see that the front and back are now um equal 
because we closed the bust that you know but the center front is still 17 inches okay if you look at the um, picture i sent initially you see that the, the center on the front panel is longer and it tapers off towards the back so that is how we've been able to achieve that i hope um you enjoyed this tutorial please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe